If you're going through a rebranding, merger, acquisition, or you signed up for Microsoft Business and you didn't have a company name and now you do, this is a great time to change your SharePoint domain name, sometimes known as the SharePoint URL or very close to your SharePoint fallback domain. Typically, it's something like yourbrandname.sharepoint.com and sometimes if you signed up the wrong way, it can be some random numbers.sharepoint.com. And of course, these URLs can be customer facing, right? When you share a link from SharePoint or OneDrive, it uses this SharePoint.com URL. So it's in your best interest just for marketing purposes to change the URL, the SharePoint domain to your new brand name. So something like your new brand name dot SharePoint.com forward slash and the rest of the link. And in this video, I'll show you exactly how to do that. My name is Bogdan Chaperny, founder of Apex One IT. And if you're a small business, we do things like this, setting up Microsoft for you, email, folders, even Teams phone. So if you need help, look for a link on the screen or in the video description. All my content is free to you. All I ask is that you subscribe and smash the like button. Okay, so first, an overview of what we're going to cover. First of all, there is this video out by Microsoft. It's a couple years old. And unfortunately, it's out of date, actually, which is why I'm making this video for you. But they do kind of share the basics of it, and I'll be sure to cover this for you step by step. And I'll link this below, change your SharePoint domain name. This is from Microsoft. So we'll walk through this exactly step by step so you don't miss anything. And right away, there's a couple of limitations to understand. Now, there's a whole big list here, but some of the big ones here, just to know that Microsoft will forward any links you already have, maybe save you shared links with other people already. They will redirect those links to your new URL, SharePoint domain, for one year, okay? After that, you'll, you know, by that time, the links that actually matter will be updated and you'll be using the new links anyways. But yes, so when you change your SharePoint URL, type in your old brand name, that's SharePoint.com, it auto redirects to the new one for one year. And another thing is that you can essentially, without a bunch more work, you can only do this once, okay? So think about that before you make this domain name change. And we'll be creating something called a on Microsoft.com URL, which is if you just signed up for Microsoft, that's kind of their default domain that they use. And you can only create five of those. And some things like OneNote, for example, they're making note of here is that some OneNote, OneDrive, it might not be usable during this time when this is going on. And you'll see this, process is actually scheduled and you have to schedule at least 24 hours in advance and no more than 30 days in advance. So once that starts, some things might be impacted and you know, might not be able to use it during that time. I'm here on a Saturday and we're going to run this through on a Saturday weekend and I don't have a bunch of URLs, so it's probably going to go within an hour, it's going to get it done and no one's going to be affected. And the last thing, somewhere they have this about OneDrive, right? So if you're like on Windows and someone has OneDrive sync, right, you're syncing your files and on Mac as well, it usually has your that SharePoint domain name there, like OneDrive dash your brand name, your old brand name, that link, that URL that you'll see in your Finder or in your Windows Explorer on a Windows PC is going to have your old name there unless you sign out of your OneDrive sync and then sign back in, then it'll re refresh. Okay, and that's only after the domain name has changed. Okay, so those are the limitations, the main ones you should know, but you can read through all these. And again, I'll have this linked in the video description. All right, so really the first step that you can kind of check if your domain name is available to use with SharePoint, you can just type it in. And essentially, if it pops up with something like this, but you can't find the server, that means it's actually available to use, like ABC, although you need to have that domain. Okay, so now I'm trying bac.sharepoint.com. You kind of know something's going on there. Okay, and this is different. So this now is showing that someone actually is using this for SharePoint. I'm just not part of that Microsoft team or group, so I can't see it. This is kind of a way that you can test whether or not your name is going to be available before you even do this at all. Okay, then once you know what you want to add, go to admin.microsoft.com, just Microsoft 365 Admin Center. You do need to be like a domain administrator. You need to have those rights or you're just the global admin. If you own this account, you are the global admin. So let's go to show all and you want to find settings, then domains. And under domains, our current SharePoint domain here is seller apex. That prefix really is what we're changing. So we want to click on it and you'll notice it says it's our fallback domain. So it's very important you click on the domain name that you have, that's the dot on microsoft.com. You might have other ones. If you only signed up recently, you probably just have this one. So here towards the bottom right, we click add on microsoft.com domain. 
Okay, so you notice here it just says, you know, type in your organization name, your brand name, whatever you want that domain name to be. And you can test things out here. Okay, so this is where you, we can go in here and you can just see what's available. For example, I'm here called Apex One IT, and maybe I, I wanted to have Apex One. Now you'll notice, by the way, you don't have to capitalize it. But if I click add domain, it'll probably tell me that someone else owns it. Yep. It's already in, in use by another organization, right? So I can't even use that. So what I should be able to use is the domain I actually own, which is Apex One IT. Okay, and let's click that. Great. So we added domain. We don't want to make it a fallback yet. Okay, later you could at the very end of this. Let's go to the new domain. Okay, so we'll just click here to make fallback domain. Again, I want to do this until you're done doing the rename of the SharePoint domain. Let's click back here to domains. So now you'll see that we have two on Microsoft.com. Here's the new one that we added. We just want to make sure that our status here says healthy before we proceed. You might just need to refresh it. Step two, we need to run PowerShell to run a couple of commands. Now, don't be afraid if you never use PowerShell. It's quite simple. They lay out here and I'll show you exactly what that will look like. The one thing to know is I now connected to a Windows PC. You just can't run this on a Mac as of yet. Don't really foresee it. So you do need to have a PC computer. So first right here, we're going to click this link. And again, I'll have this in the video description. So we want to download this. It's the SharePoint Online Management Shell. And most likely you don't have it. If you do have some previous version of it, you will just have to uninstall it. And there's, I'll show you how to do that as well. So, you know, you need to accept this, obviously install. You need to be an admin on your computer as well. And I should point out, so you can actually search for this as well. So let's maybe try that just in case if you have it. I mean, there's a couple of ways to do it. You can go to the start menu with your Windows key and click add or remove programs. You can just search for that app. So I just installed it, which is why it's here. And you can double check that you have the same version that was in that URL. And if you had an older version, you actually need to uninstall it before you just click on install, follow the steps before you install the latest version. And then you'll launch PowerShell, hit your start menu or push it on your keyboard and just search for it here and then click on Windows PowerShell. We'll want to connect to Microsoft, to SharePoint. So you'll just grab this command right here and you just need to replace this with your old company name. All right, so for me, like that and make sure this dash admin stays there, right? You'll notice this URL looks a little bit different. Okay, so then I'm going to copy that and just paste it here, control V, right? Return and here, pick your account to sign in as an admin or use another account. Okay, so after you log in, it's going to close that window and you'll have the next line of code to enter. All right, so the next line is just this right here. And let me show you an example. Right, so in my case, this domain name is your new domain name. Okay, and you need to schedule a time, again, at least 24 hours in advance and no more than 30 days. So right now I'm pushing it close about 24 hours and 10 minutes away from this date here. Okay, so just make sure you enter that correctly. Year, month, day, hour, minute, and second, this T needs to stay there as well. You do not need this. So let's paste that, hit return. Okay, you're just asking me, you know, have I read this? Do I know what I'm doing here? We want to, we can put Y for yes, or even A for yes to all. Okay, so we got name job ID, and we can check on the status by using this command right here. Hit return. Okay, so we see it should be the same job ID number, and it is, and the status, it shows that it's queued. And the time here is in UTC, by the way. Okay, so just obviously be careful of that. You know, it'll probably not match the dates that you put in because it's again UTC. So it'll tell you when you did this, when you requested that, who requested this, and your new domain name. So you can check that here. Okay, so I'm back here on another day. It's already been a couple hours since I scheduled this rename to occur. So we're several hours in and it should be active now. So first thing, you can open PowerShell again and we need to connect to the service. So we'll copy this command. And remember again, this is your old domain here. So let's paste that, hit return. It's going to prompt you to sign in. All right, so we've signed in. And what we can do now, and you can actually do this at any time, even before the scheduled rename, you can run this command, which is to get the status. 
So if you run it before it happens, it'll just tell you the schedule is in progress. We'll run it now. So just paste that, hit return. Okay, so we got our status is success, which means it's completed. Okay, so the whole rename process is done. We have, we should see the same job ID number, our new domain name, and the total size is just how many kind of teams and groups you have in, in SharePoint. So all of those have been renamed. All the sites, nothing's in progress. Everything's renamed, no errors. That's how we want it to be. All right, so at this point we can close this and I'll have these saved for you in the description as well. And there's a couple ways to test that this also actually happened. You can go ahead into your web browser here and just type in that URL, the same one that we used to log in. So here you can type in that URL, so your new brand name. So in my case, Apex One IT, and then the rest will be the, sh the same for you, dash admin dash SharePoint.com. So if you type that in and you're logged in with your global admin or the SharePoint admin, you should be able to get here. And this is just your SharePoint admin center. And you can also get here from Microsoft 365 admin center, right? This is the, the main one. So here, click show all, and then you can click on the SharePoint admin center. When you go there, you should see that new URL with your new brand name or new company name. And some of the other things you should know that maybe you would want to go ahead and change some like important links you have saved somewhere. You can change those if you need to. One other thing I want to show you, we've just changed the SharePoint domain, right? But this doesn't actually change your entire organization domain in Microsoft. So that's probably a whole nother how to, but just kind of simply I'll show you that you can go to, let's go settings, org settings. So this is all in Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Then go to organization and profile, and you can click here to organization information. And here you can now go and change like the name, so the name of your organization, right? And some other things if you need to. And really, you'll probably need to go to this link, which gives you instruction that depending on what kind of billing profile you have with Microsoft, you actually won't be able to change it. And that's actually over here. And I'll link this below too. So change your organization's address, technical contact, that kind of stuff. You'll notice in your billing profile, you'll have this Microsoft's customer agreements type of billing account type, and you'll actually need to fill up a whole different, fill out a different form and then contact Microsoft to change your organization name. But I've kind of noticed, so I, I have the same kind of billing agreement, but here in settings, I was still able to, you know, if you're not changing too much information, you can still try to change your organization's name and it'll give you an error, but you'll notice in some places, so let me jump out of here. In some places, it'll actually update the name. So. Most likely you'll still want to go through that documentation I showed you here, but let's go here. So here we are, Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Even here, it gives me my new organization's name. Okay, even though it said an error, and technically I need to go here and fill out this form. All right, just a tip for you if you want to try that out. I trust this video helped you out, so hit like and subscribe. And if you need help with doing things like this, again, there's links in the video description. Thanks for watching, take care.